Welcome everyone and today we are going to learn about food processing. So this is one of the major topic in food safety officer examination. So in today's class we shall learn certain concepts, terms and definition of food processing. So now let's get into the class. So what do you mean by food processing? So processing is nothing but we convert any kind of raw material or to be very precise we convert the agriculture products into food. So when you convert some agriculture products into food that would increase the shelf life of a product and it also meets the increasing demand of the population. So this is one of the beautiful beautiful concepts in today's world. So it is not only the agriculture products but also you can convert any form of food into another form. So this is what is food processing. So why food processing was invented? So why it was done? It was actually because to increase the shelf life. That is a major objective. So what are the other objectives of food processing is that it increases the shelf life of the product. It prevents food contamination. Yeah, you can preserve the food. Okay, and now when you want to store some food or when you want to take some food for transportation, so when you process the food, it would be very much helpful. The same way, whatever you do, the ultimate goal would be shelf life or storage. Okay, so when you convert, like when you convert a raw food material into something attractive, you know, people would be so attractive to the food material, they would buy the product, so it, it will be somewhat like useful to the consumer as well as the person who sells it. So it is benefited on both the sides. And at last, okay, whatever you do, you get an employment, okay, that's it. So these are the major objectives of food processing. And now we are just gonna get into the deeper version of the class, some terms and principles of food processing. Here, we're gonna learn about transition. So we've got two types of transition. One is phase transition and the other one is glass transition. Okay, so now what do you mean by phase transition? It is nothing but the transition from solid to fluid or from a fluid to solid. Okay, this is called as phase transition. So in such a type of a concept, like how could you expect the MCQs in your food safety officer examination? So they would give the examples and ask which type of transition do they follow? Or they would ask us like what is the examples of phase transition and they would give you some four choices and it can be like water to water vapor in evaporation, distillation, dehydration, water to ice in freezing, freeze drying, freeze concentration and crystallization of fats. So when you get such an example, your answer would be phase transition. Now, this phase transition, you know, takes place isothermally, okay, especially at the phase transition temperature. This is also one important MCQ. So this happens by release or absorption of latent heat. Okay, here in phase transition, the latent heat, okay, is released or absorbed, okay. It is also represented by a phase diagram. Now, what do you mean by glass transition? Here in glass transition, there is no release or absorption of latent heat, okay. So, this transition is dependent on the temperature of the food, time and moisture content of the food. Okay, so that's all with the phase transition and the glass transition. So you can get such an example like, like such a question like glass transition takes place without release or absorption of latent heat whereas phase transition takes place with the release or absorption of latent heat. Now, what are the basic principles? Okay, the first principle, okay, we are going to see is like today in first part of this class, we will see the density, we will see the specific gravity and we will also see the viscosity. So what do you mean by density? Density, you know, as we studied in our smaller classes, it's nothing but is equal to its mass divided by its volume and its unit is kg per meter cube. Okay, now 
this density concept when you apply in food processing okay this difference in density has important effects on size reduction and mixing equipment okay this is very important something to be noted just have a note on it and next this density is not tall constant it changes with temperature okay higher the temperature lower the density okay this is a very important one mark or keyword just remember next this is particularly important in fluids where differences in density cause convection currents okay uh, in fluids when there is a difference of density the convection currents are established so this that's all about density now here in density we've got some other concepts like called the bulk density it mainly deals with the volume of food and also the volume of air okay now uh, porosity porosity is that the fraction of the volume that is taken up by air only the fraction that is taken up by air is called as porosity okay you've got the formula so where V stands for the volume of air and VA stands for the volume of air and VB stands for the volume of bulk sample now what do you mean by specific gravity so again we have an important mcq here this specific gravity is a dimensional less number you should be very careful about it okay now the density of liquids is called as or it is expressed as specific gravity so specific gravity is equal to mass of liquid divided by the mass of water is that okay yeah this specific gravity okay it's widely used in brewing and other alcoholic fermentations now what do you mean by viscosity so when you uh, when we learn about viscosity it's nothing but the liquids re internal resistance to flow okay a liquid you know mostly they have a series of layers and when it flows over a surface the uppermost layer you know it flows little faster and it always drags the next layer along okay so this is something okay this is something uh, this is something uh, so here now viscosity viscosity is nothing but the liquids internal resistance to flow okay the force which moves a liquid is known as the shearing force or the shear stress and the velocity gradient is known as the shear rate okay that's all with viscosity you should be knowing like it's just the liquids internal resistance to flow now there are two types okay again so when you have when you have a question in a food safety or if officer examination under this concept this is very very important like newtonian fluids and non newtonian fluids these newtonian fluids you know they establish a linear relationship so this linear relationship is mainly between the shearing force and the shear rate so when there is a linear relationship it is called as a newtonian fluids and when there is no i mean when there is a non linear relationship it is called as a non newtonian fluids so mostly the questions would be like they would ask the examples and they would ask us like which type of fluid they belong to just uh, just look at it um, like some simple water oil gas and some simple solutions okay they fall under this newtonian fluid others like like the emulsions the suspensions and the concentrated solutions okay like the starches the pectins the gums and the proteins all kind of sauce you know they fall under non newtonian fluids this non newtonian fluid you know is classified into some types the first type is called as a pseudo plastic type here the viscosity decreases what do you mean by viscosity it is nothing but the liquids resistance okay to flow whereas here what happens the shear rate increases the force okay it increases so 
Some examples like are the fruit juices, the concentrated fruit juices and the purees. What do you mean by dilatant fluid? So here also, so here what happens is that the viscosity increases and the shear rate also increases. So this type of behavior they say is very less common in food processing industry. But it is somewhere found like in the liquid chocolate and in corn flour suspension. Now, the next type is bingham or casin plastic fluid. So here, there is no flow until a critical shear stress is reached. So here comes a tomato, ketchup, a sauce, and then the shear rate is either linear or non-linear. It can be either linear or non-linear. Okay, now, okay, let's just be very careful about the examples uh, and what type they, uh, they fall into. Okay, so that would be the exact question they would ask us in the exam. Now, what do you mean by viscoelastic material? Viscoelastic material is nothing but it is viscous and it has got some elastic properties exhibited at the same time. When a shear stress is removed, the material, you know, it never returns fully to its original shape or it will not regain the shape as it was before. So there would be a permanent deformation. So here the dough, the cheese, the gel foods, when you take our, our dough, okay, the dough we use for chapati, when we just give a force, you know, it would never get back again. So those type of foods are called as viscoelastic, okay. So next, we've got thixotropic fluid. So the structure breaks down and the viscosity decreases with continued shear stress. When you give like, or uh, when you shear it, like when you give a, good amount of force like when you uh, whip a cream or something like that so what happened the viscosity decreases this is mostly with the creams the whipping cream falls under the reopective fluid okay here the sum like when you take a whipping cream when you just uh, like when you whip it the structure breaks down okay and the viscosity decreases so when a structure breaks down it is called as a thixotropic fluid Whereas, when a structure builds up and the viscosity increases, so that is called as a rheopectic fluid. Okay, this is very simple. So, this is called as the whipping cream. So, the example for rheopectic fluid is called as the whipping cream. Now, yeah, so that's, that's all for today's class. Uh, we'll just give a quick brush up of what we learned today. So, this is the first part of the principles of foot processing so what do you, what did we learn it's nothing but the density and specific gravity and viscosity okay as we all know yeah density is nothing but the mass divided by its volume the key words here is they are used in size reduction and mixing equipment and uh, it is not at all constant and it changes with temperature that is very very important and now we learn what is bulk density it is nothing but uh, it includes okay the density of both uh, like the volume of food and the volume of air whereas porosity is nothing but it only takes the fraction of the volume of air now what do you mean by specific gravity it is nothing but the density of fluids the density of liquids like it is always expressed as specific gravity and the important thing here is it is a dimensional less number now let's learn about the viscosity viscosity here is nothing but it's the liquids internal resistance to flow okay now there are two types one is the newtonian fluids and the other one is the non-newtonian fluids Newtonian fluids follow linear relationship whereas non-Newtonian fluids follow non-linear relationship. Now, we've got some types like pseudoplastic, dilatant fluid, Bingham or Casson plastic fluids, viscoelastic material, thixotropic fluid, rheopectic fluid. 
okay let's learn the examples and the titles okay that is very important and uh, yeah that's all with today's class thanks for watching uh, do subscribe and please like share thank you